All right, so we are back with another Photoshop tutorial in the abstract series. And in this series, what we do is we create artwork 100% in Photoshop. So if you have Photoshop and you just boot it up, you should be able to do exactly the same things we're doing here. Uh, as far as it's the, uh, the latest uh, version of Photoshop, uh, make sure it's updated. And you should be able to go to town and make these cool uh, wallpapers and stock art that you can use in your own artwork and just have some fun in Photoshop and learn some stuff. So we're gonna be creating this kind of chaotic, geometric, spacey looking thing, um, which might work very cool as a, as a mobile phone wallpaper um, or a banner for your social profiles or whatever you want. You can use it as you know a record cover, you can put, put the text on top of it, you know, whatever. So we're gonna be creating this. We don't need any external files or, or assets or anything like that. We're just gonna jump right in and make something cool like this. So before you get your new file going though, one thing you wanna think about is the uh, the base colors here that you wanna use, right? So we have kind of this, uh, in this one we have a, a purple and pinkish and you're seeing a bright yellow and, and a dark blue. Um, we're gonna go ahead and kind of pick some of those colors out. So when I first started, I set up a, a new file that's only like, 400 pixels by 400 pixels and then I selected some colors so I played around with some ideas and these are the the two sets of, of colors I picked out the bottom set is the ones I'm gonna use to paint with and those are gonna be what you saw that's the base like swirly look and the uh, the geometric look the top set of colors is a gradient that we're gonna be use a gradient map that we're gonna use later in the video so Go ahead and pick out some colors. Pick out, you know, maybe four or five colors. Your your some dark colors, some brighter colors. They can be saturated. They can be desaturated. They can be, uh, you know, grayscale. They can be whatever colors you want. Um, but you want to have kind of a nice range of of light to dark colors. So these are the ones I picked out, and I'm going to keep this file kind of off to the right. So before I jump in, you know pause the video, go find some colors. And uh, and if you want these ones exactly, actually, they'll be uh, shared below and you can uh, grab them there. But we're gonna use these ones. All right, so the first thing you need to do is of course, well, make a new file. So let's go to file new. And I've already picked out some dimensions for the canvas. We're gonna do a landscape uh, view orientation of the artboard. Um, the width, I've already got it set to 3000 pixels in width and then the height 2000. Your resolution, you can set it to 72. I don't intend to print this. If you want to make, make a uh, uh, file that's printable, you probably want to have that set to at least 300. And then your color mode, uh, pretty important, you set that to RGB if it's not already set. So if you have all those settings, everything else I have on here should be the Photoshop defaults. You don't really need to worry about them. Um, I like to keep these simple and easy. So create, and you got your, your canvas here. All right, so we have our additional color file laid out here on the right, so we can easily just take swatches and, and paint uh, our canvas up here to get started. One cool thing that I like to use is the shortcut for filling a layer with background color. So let's go ahead and double check or, or set our background color to probably one of the darker colors you picked out, right? So I have this dark midnight blue color that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna select that and make sure that it's it's on the uh, the background here. So just so you, you can see it. If your toolbar is set up in this way, you should see your colors off to the left. Um, select the background and just make sure it's your first darker color that you wanna use. Now the shortcut, and I've used this since the 90s, it's like, one of the most <laughs> overused shortcut of mine is just simply on, on Windows machines, pressing Control Delete, and that will fill your layer with your background color. All right, so we have that set, and now let's have some fun and just get some, some color in there to, uh, to play with and get started. Uh, you'll notice I have the brush tool already selected. Um, if you don't have that selected over on the left hand side, just select your brush tool. Make sure it's the, uh, this, the general first one brush tool. Now let's go ahead and set a foreground color to probably the next, uh, color you want to use the next brightest color, I guess. So I have this teal selected that I'm just going to swatch and I will use this one to, to paint some, some, uh, areas of, of just, just pop in some color here and there. So I'm gonna click. Okay. 
uh, I'll go ahead and let's right click on my brush settings so you can see what I've got now the size is around 1200 uh, pixels in diameter and most importantly the hardness is set to zero we don't want we don't really want any hardness here so the uh, the softer brush is going to give us that nice transition of of color of one color into another and give us kind of that spectrum um, grading effect right so once you have that just kind of just click in some colors right we don't we're not going crazy you just want to have a little bit all right so you notice I'm just painting a little bit. I only clicked it like maybe three or four times. I didn't go in there and just draw all sorts of stuff. Um, but you can. I'm not saying you don't need to, but you can. But if you want to get the uh, the effect we're going after, it's probably something like this. So after you've done your first color here, let's go ahead and open the color palette again just by clicking on it. And let's select the next color. And I've got this kind of pinkish uh, coral looking color where I'm going to use. So let's click OK. And let's just kind of dump in couple more clicks of color right and then you guessed it rinse and repeat I'm gonna pick this lavender I've got and we will kind of click in some more and then of course the last one is this other dark blue I have which really isn't very much different than or, or very different than the first one but hey it, we got variety in here so let's click OK and we will go ahead and color in a bit more so if you've noticed, uh, take another swatch. We, we've we've kind of just colored a, a, a gradient, right? So we have our colors that we've chosen up here. We've done the same thing here. Now you don't have to follow this exactly, but uh, we're trying to get that nice transition of of one color into another and have it real smooth and have that um, that uh, that effect we were looking after that we we're looking for. So. Once you have your color down, now you're gonna you're gonna play with a filter called Liquify, and Liquify is one of the funnest, most addictive um, filters in Photoshop uh, that I think, <laughs> and so uh, you might find yourself in there quite often. Um, so we'll go to Filter, and about the sixth option down, you'll see something called Liquify. So let's go ahead and pop that open, and you get this screen. So Liquify is really a it's kind of like a giant smudge tool and you can push and pull colors around and really make some cool effects and get that that liquid or that uh, that kind of water look um, but the, you're gonna have a lot of fun if you've never used it before it's a lot of fun so right now my brush uh, tool options off to the right my the the size that I'm using is 1200 um, you can use any size you want. You can use, you know, the, the bigger the brush, the more area you're going to be able to manipulate. The smaller the brush, the more detail you're going to get into. Uh, for this type of design, we're looking at something more subtle. So I'm going to keep the brush on the bigger side, so around 1200. The uh, the pressure, I've got it set to 100. So whatever I, I click and, and move around, it's going to put all the pressure behind it, which you'll see in a sec. And then density, I have set to 50, which I think is the, the Photoshop default. So Everything else that you're seeing on the right, if you've never messed around with this before, um, it should just be the Photoshop default. So this is where we're gonna have some fun. This is where you can you can start to pull one color into another and get that subtle uh, uh, gradient effect and really kind of give your, uh, this is where you give your art some character, right? So I'm gonna kind of just pull this around and you can see you get kind of like folds and, um, it really changes when you when you use big spots of color like this. It's a lot of fun. It's a way to to really um, just really make gradients look cool. Uh, if you use a smaller brush, you can see you can get some more detail. See, I was just pulling that around, and the 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 real cool thing about this tool is if you just press Control Z. If you don't want something, just undo it. So Control Z to undo, and you can go right back to what you had before. So I'm not going to really use like a small brush in this. I'm going to keep it kind of larger, like I said, to, to move big areas of color around. So another thing to look for is that you you want to you want to have 100% coverage on the whole screen, right? So you'll notice off to the left side when I was pulling one color in, right? You can see the uh, the canvas starting to peek through and that's not we don't want that we want we want full color like you know 100 percent all the way around so what you can do is just simply push it back 
right? Uh, so if you see areas like that peaking, just go ahead and just kind of smudge or push the color right back into it. And it should work pretty well. I'm gonna undo that. But this is where you just you have some fun. Um, again, if you've never used this, it's a blast. You can do some really cool stuff with, with the liquify uh, filter here. So I'm gonna kind of squeeze this in and give it kind of a, see how the, the pink is getting really narrow? It almost looks like, I don't know, kind of like a lightning effect or something, like a blurry lightning bolt hitting the, hitting the ground here. So uh, I think that's about cool. That looks kind of cool. All right, let's click OK. And you'll see we're back to our file and it's all implemented and looking pretty sharp. The next thing you want to do is kind of roughen this up a bit. So I'm going to zoom in one so you can see this at 100%. And I'll go ahead and minimize my gradients for now because we already got the, the first batch of color we're using. And we should just still be on the background layer um, manipulating the, uh, the base uh, colors of this. And again, you can pick any colors you want. The next thing I like to do is, like I said, apply um, a little bit of texture to it. So we're going to come up to Filter. And your third option down there is Filter Gallery. Within filter gallery, one of the, the cool filters that works well for this, in my opinion, is under artistic folder on the right, there's one called film grain. And film grain will roughen it up just enough where it, it, it gives it a little more action. Um, you can see that it, it brought out this, uh, where the, the teal and the pink meet a bit more, which is kind of cool. So it's starting to get give more like color value in there uh, and, and really start to make it, you know, give it some action. So for now, I just have grain set to four, the highlight area is zero and intensity is 10. Um, again, you can play those settings, you know, get them however you want to. It's really, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's, it's, it's just have fun. That's the whole point of these videos, just have fun. So I'm gonna click okay. And we've, we've added our film grain. So now when we go back to our, our base design that we did before, we want this geometric effect on top, right? So how do we do that? Uh, how do we make a bunch of, you know, do I have to go in and draw every one of these shapes or whatnot? No, there's actually a really cool, easy way to do this. And we, we did this in an abstracts video uh, years ago where, where we manipulate a brush. And by doing that, we can set up our, our geometric shapes here. So the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and create a new layer. So layer, new, layer. And let's go ahead and name that. That's going to be just to just to keep it organized. This is going to be our brush layer, right? So I'm gonna select. I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep that layer. Now, what you want to do? Let's make a brush shape. A shape. Let's make a geometric shape that we can work with, right? So let's go over to our pen tool on the left side, and with the pen tool, you get some options up top. Uh, now, whether or not sometimes. Um, you should see these under, they could be under properties. Uh, but up top, we have some options showing up. We wanna make sure it's set the shape. And for this one, since we already have a, a darker background color here, I'm gonna set the fill to, let's just use white so we can see it, see what we're doing. Hit okay. We don't need a stroke. Don't need to worry about the, uh, the stroke width. None of this other stuff, all right? We're just gonna draw our, our shape. And if you'll notice, you wanna draw a shape that you know a base shape that is around the size you want it to, to to be right so you can see we have this is really the same shape that's being replicated over and over and you have some very small like super tiny versions of it and then you have kind of your larger version so you want to pick you want to create a shape that's kind of in between there so let's just draw let's click some points and i'm gonna do more of a uh Maybe something like that, more of a diamond shape, right? And then what we can do is this is a this has been filled, right? So now we can see what we did. And let's go ahead and fill this with just the color black. So I know we 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 drew it in white so we could see it, right? Um, but now we're gonna fill it in black because we're gonna make this our brush. Okay. So if uh, you want to do that, click OK. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to define this new shape as a brush, right? 
So quickly, just go to your background and your layers palette. If you don't have the layers open, go to uh, Window and go to Layers. Make sure that's open. And we want to just toggle out the visibility on your background. We're not, we don't want this to be part of the brush. So any layer that's hidden, Photoshop will say, okay, I'm not using that for, for what you're going to do here. So we're going to toggle off visibility of the background layer. Let's go ahead and make sure our brush layer is selected, our new shape, or, or selected in the, uh, the layers palette. And let's go to Edit and Define Brush Preset. Now you should see your shape as the brush and you, you can rename this uh, if you want. I'm going to call this our scatter um, brush. I'm sorry, my keyboard's so loud. I'm going to hit OK. We have our brush. So let's go ahead and turn our background back on and let's make a new layer. So layer, new, layer. And this can be layer one or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call this our geometric shapes with a super loud mechanical keyboard. Hit OK. <laughs> and look at that. Look how our cursor just changed. All right. We were still on our brush tool. And look, everywhere we click, look at that. We have a brush. But it's not right, right? So I'm going to hit Control A. I'm going to delete what I just did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide our brush shape layer over on the right. We don't need that anymore. And what we're going to do here is go to Window and go to Brush Settings. And that should pop up somewhere on your screen. For me, it's docked to the, uh, the right-hand side here. So we're going to play around with this, this brush preset we've got here, right? The first thing we want to toggle on is Shape Dynamics. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. <laughs> Uh, you'll see the preview here of, of what's going to happen. So if we turn size jitter up, for example, you're, you're seeing the, uh, the brush in the preview window change up, right? So actually, let's back up a step. Let's go to brush tips shape because in here, this is where we adjust the spacing. So the spacing is very important. You want to turn that spacing up, okay? So let's try, this is around 260%. Let's try that. So turn your spacing way up because that means as you draw, right, if you just hold the mouse button down and, and pull the, the cursor, it's going to space where it leaves a brush. Okay, if that makes sense. So then let's go to shape dynamics and this is where we, we give it that, that, um, that randomness, right? We give that chaotic kind of feel to it. So we have size jitter. So if we turn size jitter back down, you see that it's just spaced, right? If we, if we turn size jitter up, you'll notice it's randomized. So we get, we get different size shapes. Some can be larger, some can be, can be bigger. Uh, you can play around with minimum diameter a little bit if you want, but that's going to be how small does it get? You're telling, telling Photoshop, don't ever get any smaller than, than this percent of the brush. For now, we're going to leave that at zero. Angle is a lot of fun. Okay, so adjust your angle uh, jitter, and that'll randomize how that, that shape lands every time you paint it. I'm not so worried about roundness because we want this to be sharp edges and whatnot. Uh, you can play around with like flip uh, X jitter or flip Y jitter to if you want some more variety in there. The next thing we want to look at is scattering. So if we click on scattering, then this is where the shapes really start to shift when you when you when you apply the brush. So on scatter, let's go ahead and select both axes. And then you can see, right? You can see your, your shapes moving around. This is gonna give you a better pres uh, representation of what you're getting. Uh, you can turn the count up, right? You'll see the, the kind of the density of all of this happening go, goes way up. Uh, count jitter. So that's as you have, have, as you have more of, of the, the shape uh, counted in one brush stroke like it's even gonna gonna randomize that so again you can you can go to town on this you can have some fun uh, I might go back up here and turn the if you adjust the spacing right you can go back to the spacing you can get 
all sorts of effects. This is really cool if you want to really easily make leaves. <laughs> uh, this is a good approach to it, but I think I'm going to keep it right around here. And there's not really, there's no specific recipe to this. It's just kind of like, you know, have fun. So now that we are back onto our canvas here, I'm going to right click and just make sure the size is up. And this might take a few trial and error just to kind of see what it's going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and, and paint just with a, a, the color white again and just kind of see what happens, right? So I'm just kind of clicking around. And it's really, the spacing is like crazy on here. But I'm getting that, that random geometric feel to this. And I can, you can maybe turn the size up and down and get kind of, you know, if you want to really have more group than an area over another. Oh man, okay. So it depends on how crazy you want to go. If you want to keep it subtle or if you want to keep it um, kind of wild, <laughs> it's really, really up to you. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, again, the uh, the brush settings, you can go crazy, right? So we're going to leave it like right here to get this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Now, these shapes, we're not, we're just, we're, we're using them as a, um, a, we're going to use them as a selection is what we're going to do. So go ahead and toggle off uh, your geometric shapes for now, just so we can see what we're doing and select your background layer. Okay. So background layer selected, just pre simply press control J and that's going to duplicate it. If you don't have that, you can go to, I think it's under layer and then new, you can do layer from background or you can do duplicate layer right duplicate layer will bring up the same thing and you can rename it so but the uh, the shortcut is control j now let's go to edit transform and let's rotate that layer 180 degrees all right so this is where we get these geometric shapes on top and we're simply all we've simply done is we duplicated the layer and moved it so we get a different selection of, of, of color basically, right? So then what you do is you don't have to toggle your geometric shapes back on just yet. If you press control and click on the little thumbnail here, you'll see we're making a selection of that brush. All right. So if you have that selected and your background copy is still selected or the, 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 180 flipped uh, or the 180 rotated um, copy of your background. If you come down here to the bottom of your layer palette, you have add layer mask or I'm so used to using the palettes. I forget where it lives in um, in the menu up here, but you can do. Ah, I don't see it. If you come down here at the bottom, <laughs> let's do the Evan approach and just click add layer mask. That's where you get that geometric feeling of where just it it you know the it's taking the image and just masking out uh, a different area of it or a different um a version of it and that's really how you can stop right here if you want to and have you know have that effect and have that uh that stock art ready um but yeah so that's kind of the the base setup for this uh, let's kind of compare it so far to our original and looks pretty cool actually I think I like our new one better so far yeah <laughs> but that's how you get that look and feel right that's how you get that that kind of that random chaotic design the uh, the last thing I want to do though is kind of punch up the colors a bit more and by by that we're gonna add a gradient map to this so I'm gonna open my 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 uh, my color swatches file one more time and let's go to let's go back to our uh, uh, our image here, and let's go to layer. And about where does this live? Um, we need adjustment layer, new adjustment layer, and under new adjustment layer, towards the bottom, you should have gradient map, 
All right, so let's select that. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it more colors. And you will see it created a new layer on top of our other layers. All right, so right now it's looking a little, little weird, right? If you click on the gradient editor, okay, we're going to set this gradient here to the same thing we got over here, okay? So with your stops, right? This is a this is a color stop. In a gradient, you have stops of color. So the leftmost one, I'm going to click on the color and then just simply go over here. Once your once your uh, color picker is open, you can just select your your color that you've already chosen, right? So it's it's almost a uh, it's a super dark blue, right? Hit OK. Let let's go ahead and select our our last stop because we just have the two colors here and do the same thing color and it's it's kind of this like grayish blue light gray blue color that I've got going on here and select that okay so now we got to add these three in the middle right so we will come back and let's add the middle most color and we'll select red and you can see what's happening to our image below it's colorizing uh, it's it's saying okay the because we have the dark most color on the left it's it's making the dark most colors in the gradient this color currently okay and then the lightest colors in the gradient it's making it this color now if we reverse it it will make all your your bright colors dark and all your dark colors bright okay it, it reverses it but it's from left to right it's you it's going from your darkest colors to your brightest colors all right so we have the red chosen let's go in between there let's do this this royal blue Right, and you can see it's getting kind of crazy. Uh, and then the last one, let's get this yellow color in. All right, so it's looking a bit odd. Uh, you can adjust this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pull, I want more of this blue to show, okay? You're probably thinking, what is happening? This looks nothing like what you were working on before. It's okay, hit okay. So what we're going to do with this gradient map is we're not going to like blast all this color into it this way we're going to play with the uh the blending mode so the blending mode i think we want to use and that's over in the palette on the right on your, your layers palette on the right is lighten okay and so lighten is starting to it's taking that gradient map and it's applying this uh it, it's applying that information we just laid out the apply these colors to you know the the the, the darker colors, the midtones, and the lighter colors on your, your base layer, but then it's also applying the, uh, the, the blend mode, which is only to lighten it up, right? So we have some of our, you can see some of our dark blues come back, and some of the, uh, the, the pink has come back. So in here, this is where you can adjust the lighten, and then you can also adjust the opacity to get you know a closer effect. And what it's doing, so if we just simply, it's, it's a very subtle thing, uh, but it's 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 giving a little more color range in your your original artwork. So that's that last step. If we toggle it back and forth, where you can get that adjustment and get some some more you know interesting colors out of it. So here, and and this is one where really you can play a color mode. So if I go to color dodge, I think that's going to blow it up. Uh, color dodge might be another good one too. So. Now I look at it, color dodge or lighten seem to be a couple good ones. Lighten, all right, color dodge. Let's go back to color dodge, actually, I kind of like that. So, and I have my opacity set at 265. So, there you have it. You have this weird, geometric, chaotic, spacey looking thing. <laughs> Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, once you get into these processes, and 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 uh, I'm sure you'll you'll have a much better memory than I do of where filters live and things like that. Uh, but you can have some serious fun with these things, and you can take this. This is just kind of the base. You can take this and really do some additional things um, off of it. Like we still have our geometric shapes layer. Like if you want to do something totally different here. Uh, it'd be cool. So the last thing that that 
I ask you guys to do that. If you find this tutorial helpful, let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments or um, wherever. And then the other thing that I really ask is that if you make this stuff, please share it to me on Twitter. I love seeing the, the artwork you guys create. Uh, my Twitter handle is below. It's just at Evan Eckerd, like everything else here is just at Evan Eckerd. Um, but please share it with me because it's cool stuff and I want to check it out and I want to see what else you guys are into. Uh, again, any of the uh, the colors that we used be uh, before are down below and you can find them down there somewhere and I will see you next time on uh, another episode of abstracts <laughs> later <laughs>